Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. I am very happy that with us today is Nicolas from the Center for Medical Genetics in Ghent. And he is going to talk about a plugin called NFT BAM. And uh, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, the Bite Size today is about NFT BAM. Um, we usually try to test uh, also the BAM and the CRUM files in our modules tests, but it's very hard to test them because um, it's really hard to read the BAM and the CRUM files. You can easily read some files, but it's also a little bit difficult to parse the correct data from it. So what we usually do if uh, the data in the header is unstable uh, is test the file name or check if the file exists, but that's not really a good test to check the contents of the file. So as a solution, I created a plugin for NFTest called NFT BAM. Um, it's a plugin that helps you parse and test the SUM, BAM, and CRUM files. So as a first step, you would need to add the plugin to your NFT uh, NFTest config like this. So plugins load NFT BAM at 0.3.0 is the latest version now. You do have to specify the version which uh, you want to use because NFTest can't uh, automatically get the latest version. So as a first step, you need to use the BAM function to read the file um, that's being outputted by the process. So that will be like process.out.bam and a specific section of uh, channel structures you have. Uh, you can also use the sum or the crumb function, which are just aliases for the BAM function. It's, they do exactly the same thing. You can also uh, supply crumb files or sum files to the BAM function. It doesn't really matter. Just for those people who want to specify it even better. For CRUM files, you also need to specify a reference. You can uh, supply a file path on your system, or you can use a remote URL from like a GitHub repository or somewhere else. Um, as far as I know, the um, cloud storage hosting does not work for that, but that can maybe be added later if that's really something people want. Then you can also set the validation string C. So, um, the library I used in the NFT BAM uh, plugin also validates if your BAM, SUM, or CRUM file are correctly formatted. Uh, this is sometimes not the case with the outputs of several functions. So this way you can, um, you can disable the stringency check of the library. If you set it to lenient, it will only uh, show the warning. So it will still show you what's wrong with the file, but um, not fail immediately if it's wrong. If you set it to silent, it will show nothing and it will just pass uh, the validation. These are the methods uh, the plugin uh, has for now. It does have this, so get header, uh, which simply gets the header of the um, sum or crumb file. You can also get the MD5 sum of the header. Uh, you can also get reads, which gets all the reads of the bomb, crumb and sum files. For this one, you need to specify the reference for the CRUM files, otherwise the uh, test will fail. Uh, you can also get the sum lines, which are the full lines of the sum file, pub crumb file or CRUM file, uh, and, the, uh, and the five counterpart. And you can also have use a function to check which file type it is. So let's see it in action. So I have a little setup here with one module that just copies uh, an input for an input file and uh, outputs the copy of it to the test. So the test is set up like this. I have a BOM test, which just inputs a, a BOM file, which is in the data folder, and then checks it na its name and a snapshot file. It also do the same thing for the CRUM file. So you can see it snapshots a copy.crum and a copy.bom. So this is a fine test, but it doesn't really test the content of the file. What we can do now is add NFT BAM to the NF test config file. So like this, uh, plugin, curly brackets, then you type loads and the name of the plugin, save it. And then you can go to the function and change this. So for example, if you want to only get the sum lines, we will update this to BAM. Then it's one is actually the output of the BAM file in this case. So we will say get some lines. And for example, for the crumb file, we want to do something different. So we say bum. We also need to specify the uh, reference in this case to get the actual content of the crumb file. So data 
fresh genome. But what's the and in this case, we want to only get the reads. So now I will run NF test to see if it works. So NF test, test, and I will update the snapshot because it now contains the file names and I don't want to send here. So let's see what it does. So as you can see, it um, loaded the plugin, which is stored in the NF test folder under the plugins. You can see it's here. So the first test passed, second one is running. And if you take a look at the snapshot, you can see the CRUM test contains all the reads of the CRUM file. And if you go to the bump test, it will contain the full sum lines of those. Of course, this is really hard to read. So maybe it will be better if we just uh, just uh, used MD5 sum of those reads. Get, get reads MD5 and get some lines from MD5. That way we can get some more readable snapshots file while still testing the same things. So let's wait for it to finish. Okay, so as you can see, this is a little bit more readable, and this is the exact MD5 sum like we had before for the reads and for the sum lines, of course. So we can also get the file type of this. So this should be crop uh, bomb, and this should be crop. Let's see if it works. Uh, you don't need to specify the ref reference for this option, but you can still do it. It doesn't really matter. Then you can also get the header files. I won't show this in this demo, but it works in, in a similar way like we did uh, for the get reads and the get some lines functions. So let's wait for this to finish. So as you can see, the BOM test has the BOM file type, and the CRUM test has the CRUM file type. This can be used to check some other things. Can do with it what you whatever you want. Uh, okay, that's it. Thank you for. Uh, oh, I'll maybe go back to the slides. Thank you for listening. I want to especially thank the NF Core community for their support in adopting NF Test and learning me all the things there are with NF Test. I want to specify my company, the company I work for, is at Ghent and the University of Ghent. And a special thanks to Lucas Forer and Sebastian Skronher. Sorry if I mispronounce the names, I'm not German, um, for their development of NF test. Thank you. Thank you um, for a really an interesting talk. We already have a question. Um, Adam, you can also now unmute yourself if you uh, want to ask yourself. Hello. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. Um, Hello. Yeah, my question was that you, you, know, you mentioned the reads, like, oh, you don't want to put too many of the reads in the snapshot but since the snapshot is automatically checked anyway I, you know is it is it more useful to use the reads directly in the snapshot than the md5 because the md5 is kind of garbage you can't really read it it just it just tells you stuff um and uh, what in practice have you ended up doing i guess is what i'm asking um yeah i said i prefer to read my snapshot files to know what's actually being outputted by the module so yeah i know it's correct um, I get why you want to get only the reads, but like for some bigger files, um, the snapshot will be too big and if that's still complain about sure. it. So then you will oh, okay. need to use the MD5 sim. Is, is there a maximum limit on snapshot? Files? Yeah, th there is. I don't remember how big it is, but I think um, yeah, I've, I've had it happen before that my snapshots were too big. I, th I think it's definitely a limit of 512 items in a snapshot. Yeah, something like before. that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions from the audience? Uh, I do have another one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no one go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> uh, which is, like, have you got any guidance on how to like write your first NFS plugin? Because I've never done it, never looked into it. Trial and error. 
<laughs> right, okay. It's yeah, it, it was a fun process to do. It's it was a really easy plugin to to use because the library is really easy to use. It's HS HTS JDK I used. Um but yeah, I've been asked to do a bite size in the future about NFTS plugins, and I'll maybe try to write up a little guide before that. But um, I basically looked at the plugins the developers of NFTS wrote and copy pasted a lot of the code and see what worked or see what didn't. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> I think making the dev environment is like is the biggest challenge, right? Because I think once it's in Java and stuff, I can just write like that's fine, but yeah. I don't know how to start the dev environment. Yeah, simply copy pasted the structure <laughs> from uh, from I think it was NFT Foster or something like that, and worked from there. And yeah. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any more questions? So I would like to ask one. Uh, generally, I would I wonder how long does it actually take to run this test? on an actual data set. I mean, here you used a, a very small one, but if you have a real actual bum crumb or what was the third, another one, am um, file. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually yeah. haven't really used it to test really big files because all my tests, I try to keep them very small to, kept, to keep them running faster. Um, but yeah, it could take a while because it has to read every line of the of the file to get to generate MD5 sim or to get all the reads from it. So the bigger your file is, the longer it will take. Right. But it's still better than just testing the name. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I was just wondering if you if you actually have experience in how long it takes to run, because it then has to also do the MD5 on two files, right? If it's not provided. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there more questions from the audience? In that case, I want to thank you again for this very informative bite-sized talk. And um, anyone who listened, I want to thank for their attention. And now the bite-sized talk is going to go into a summer break and we will be back after August. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice summer. Thank you. Thank you.